Hey guys! Now, sorry if the colour and the lighting is off a bit today. I've been trying to sort this out and for some reason it just keeps not wanting to play ball. Today, we're going to talk about tongue piercings. The positive, the negative and all the crap that goes along with it. A lot of you probably already have your tongue pierced and if you don't, why not? To be fair, I don't have my tongue pierced anymore. And there is a very good reason for that that I will get to. In fact, there's a reason for that I will get to. It's not a particularly great reason though. I'll be breaking this video down into three different sections. The first is getting the piercing. The second is the long-term effects. And the third part is the extras, which is just any other bits that I couldn't fit into the other sections. Getting the piercing done, you have to be sure that you're aware of the risks, blah, 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 blah. First thing is you want to make sure that you don't have any communication with anyone you don't want to know that you've had it done because you are not going to be able to speak properly and it's going to be blindingly obvious to anyone even over the phone that you've had something done or something's a bit off you will not be able to move your tongue very much because it will swell very very large and you'll have a massive bar in there to compensate for the fact that your tongue is going to grow the actual piercing itself it wasn't bad for me but each piercing is different for each person. Say, like, I got my septum done, I was absolutely fine. I know that some people have had it done and have been crying their eyes out. To be fair, it does make your eyes water, but that's a different subject for a different time. To get your tongue pierced, now, the main issue that I had was I have a tongue tied. I have a tied tongue. I also can't speak properly. Basically, my frenum is attached to the end of my tongue, which attaches to the bottom of my mouth far too near the end of my tongue. So it is extremely difficult for me to stick my tongue out. With the forceps, the piercer had to pull my tongue out as far as he could, which was probably the most painful part for me. It wasn't the clamping down, it was the pulling. It wasn't even the needle, that wasn't even that bad. One of the main issues you've got to be careful about, the fact that you can hit blood vessels in your tongue. If you go to a good piercer, they will make sure that you're not going, or they're not going through any blood vessels. The healing time isn't particularly long, obviously dependent on each person. And during that time, you'll probably only be able to consume cold liquids. Stuff like yogurt and ice cream are really, really good and you will appreciate them a lot more. Of course, you can make smoothies of your favorite foods, but I don't really know whether making a smoothie of a Sunday lunch is really gonna be your cup of tea. And of course, as I mentioned before, you will speak with a lisp for a little while. This is just until the tongue heals. You should be able to get full control of your tongue after that and talk properly again, which leads us into the second part of this video, which is the long-term effects. I stretched my tongue up, and each time you stretch it, you do get that lisp back again. It's only for a very short time until your tongue gets used to the extra width of the bar. I think I managed to get mine up to about a 6mm. I did that mainly so that I could fit a straw through it. That's a good party trick if you ever wanted to try it. And of course, if you do stretch it, I recommend that you change the jewellery from metal, if you did have it with metal, to acrylic or bioflex because they are going to be much kinder to your gums and your teeth. When I had a 6mm bar, I had a massive ball on the end, well both ends, duh, and the bottom one did start to deteriorate the inside of my gums. I was getting a little worried because one of my teeth was starting to wobble and that is why I took my tongue bar out. I've had it out for a number of years now but I still, I think I can fit a 2mm bar through. I haven't tried that for a while. The tongue is an incredibly quick healer so if you do take your tongue bar out I recommend that you put a bar in it fairly quick afterwards if you want to keep that piercing because your tongue will heal up. And now on to the last bit, which is the extras section. There are lots of different types of tongue piercings. From my opinion, I would only go for the normal tongue piercing. Depending on how far back you want it, it's completely up to you. Well, it's probably up to your piercer, actually. They'll know far more about it. Placement is key. If you do want to get your tongue split, it's probably best to get it done further back and stretch it up so that when it gets split it's more likely to stay open. You go to any professional piercer that does tongue splitting and they will probably recommend that you get your tongue pierced and stretch it up first. As I said before there are lots of different types of tongue piercing. Choose whichever one you want. Obviously multiple piercings are going to need to be done separately. One that I would stay away from is the horizontal piercing. It has far more chance of hitting a vein or a blood vessel. Technically speaking it is far more dangerous and in my opinion not really worth the risk. Thanks for watching guys. If you have your tongue pierced then let me know in the comments below or if you have any weird tongue piercings like multiple piercings again let me know in the comments below. 
If you want any other information concerning tongue piercings or any other piercings, or you'd like me to do a video on a different piercing just to cover the basics or to go into more depth, let me know below and I will see you next time. Catch you later. Bye.